Good morning interweb how to construct ocean currents. First, a map. Oceans, continents, winds. Close to the equator, draw in two currents flowing to the west. Split these currents whenever a continental shelf is met. Equatorward, poleward. The equatorward flow will loop back around to form an equatorial countercurrent moving eastward. Split the flow at the shelf and boom, we've just created and closed our first ocean gyre. Between 30 and 45 degrees north and south, the westerlies kick in and will drag our currents eastward. Once again, split the flow at the shelves, the equatorward flow will close our tropical gyres and the poleward flow will begin our next set. The easterlies kick in around 60 to 75 degrees north and south and will blow the currents westward. Split the flow at the shelves and close those loops. Finally, if you have an open ocean at any of the poles, drop in a westward flowing circumpolar current. And if there are any gaps, fill them in with smaller gyres or simply by logically extending existing currents. Note that the red currents are warm, blue are cold and black are neutral. That is, warm currents carry warm water from lower latitudes to higher latitudes. Blue currents carry cool water from higher latitudes to lower latitudes. And black currents are kind of neutral. No significant heat exchange is occurring as they travel more or less latitudinally. Anyways, check to see if all the loops are closed and that the spin directions all make sense. Like if one gyre spins clockwise, the other should spin counterclockwise, then clockwise, then counterclockwise. You get the idea. Basically, think of your ocean as a system of interconnected gears and you can't go wrong. So there you go, ocean currents, done. That said, if your planet is not exactly like Earth, you'll need to alter things slightly. Like if your planet spins in the opposite direction to Earth, retrograde, flip all the currents, like so. If it has a single circulation cell per hemisphere, it will have less gyres, but they'll be larger. This for prograde spins and this for retrograde spins. Three circulation cells per hemisphere equals Earth, prograde, retrograde. Five cells per hemisphere will produce smaller gyres and more of them, prograde, retrograde. And the same deal with seven cells per hemisphere, just more so again, prograde, retrograde. If this all sounds like gibberish, check out the linked video. The underlying logic here is that a current will change direction somewhere between the start and midpoint of each cell. So the more cells you have, the more the winds will change direction, the more gyres will be created. Now, if your planet is a water world, it will be banded. Think Jupiter, but with water. Pro tip though, if you grind down some of your continents such that they are just below sea level, you get the aesthetic of a water world, but with the currents of an Earth-like planet. Because remember, the currents are deflected at the continental shelf, not the actual continents. If we were to tidally lock our water world, we'd end up with a sort of spaceship looking ocean encased in ice with two big gyres in either hemisphere. Once we introduce continents, the same rules from earlier apply. Split the flow when a continental shelf is hit and close the loops. Now that we've mapped our currents, let's talk effects. Obviously, ocean currents will affect seafaring societies. Explorers from the western continent might discover the eastern continent way before these nearby islands just by sailing downwind and following the currents. Or they might do what the early Polynesians did and sail upwind. The idea being that if something went wrong on the voyage, it would be easy to get back home quick. This is one of the reasons why Polynesians arrived in the likes of Hawaii and the Easter Islands literally hundreds of years before they reached relatively nearby New Zealand. So ocean currents can be both oceanic highways and roadblocks, depending on how a society deals with them. In terms of climate, ocean currents will cause latitudinal variations. Compare Florida and the Baja California Peninsula. Both lie on the same latitude, yet one is dry and hot, and the other is wet and super hot. The culprit, ocean currents. Cold water means cold air, which means less evaporation, less clouds and less rain. So whenever cold currents flow along land masses, cooler, drier coastal conditions are created. The reverse is true of warm currents. Warm water means more evaporation, so expect wetter, warmer coastal conditions. It's worth noting these areas on your map. In addition, expect cool coastal waters to be very nutrient rich. These will be your world's fishing hotspots. And expect coral reefs to form anywhere in the tropics where warm currents flow. To finish up, let's talk ENSO events. ENSO, short for El Nino Southern Oscillation, is an irregularly periodic variation in winds and sea temperatures that occurs in the Pacific Ocean. It has three main phases, a neutral phase, and then La Nina and El Nino, both of which can last for several months, vary in intensity and typically occur every few years. 
In the neutral phase, or normal phase, the trade winds blow across the Pacific. These winds push warm water across the Pacific, piling it up in the west and drawing cool water up in the east via a mechanism called upwelling. The temperature differences causes air to rise in the west and sink in east, creating a huge circulation system known as walker circulation. In the La Nina phase, everything gets turned up to 11. Trade winds blow harder, more warm water is piled up in the west, more cold water is drawn up from the depths in the east, the temperature difference increases, making the walker circulation stronger, causing trade winds to blow even harder again, and boom, feedback loop engaged. La Nina brings storms and flooding to the west and heat waves and droughts to the east. In the El Nino phase, everything reverses. The trade winds weaken, allowing warm water to drift back towards the east. This breaks down the walker circulation, causing the trade winds to blow even weaker, allowing more water to gather in the east, and oh would you look at, we got ourselves another feedback loop. Just everything has flipped. El Nino brings heat waves and droughts to the west, and storms and flooding to the east. So, if your world has a large open ocean akin to the Pacific, expect equatorial landmasses on its periphery to be subject to ENSO events. And bear in mind, the directions will flip if your planet has a retrograde spin. And there you go, ocean currents, their effects, and construction done. Good morning interweb, the last Q&A went really well, so how about we do another Q&A? If you have any questions about this video in particular, or just any of my videos in general, be they world building or conlanging, leave them in the comments and I'll get to recording a Q&A. Thank you all so much for watching, and a special thanks go out to the patrons, Isaac Silbert, Robin Hilton, World Anvil, Ripta Passe, and John Huyer. Each and every one of you are awesome, and until next time, Edgar out.